Uh, it's not, it didn't, there it goes. So welcome to teacher, teachers, teaching teachers. It is the 14th of June and we've got our hearty group here tonight. Um, and uh, Bonnie Benton has a student who um, wrote an essay. Do you mind reading it, Bonnie? Okay. It's not that long. It's not that long. Yeah. Uh, all they were allowed was, um, I think it had to be 500 words. So this was in an effort just for a scholarship essay, but it was probably something he already had in his um, treasure chest of um, writings. So he um, presented to me exploring the transformative. Do you, do you want to say his first name or? Oh yeah, well, you know what? Or you don't want to? No, I, I'll oh, say okay. it. Um, okay. Ola, Shibomi, okay. Shibomi. Uh, okay. was a Nigerian child, and he's been in the country maybe five years now, five or six years. Um, and so this is what he wrote in answer to us using um, AI and AI Mojo and Youth Voices and uh, now comment and thinking partners in the classroom. Uh, exploring the transformative role of AI in modern education. In today's fast-paced digital era, technology has become an integral part of education, revolutionizing the way we learn and acquire knowledge. Artificial intelligence, AI in particular, has emerged as a game changer, enhancing the productivity and quality of the learning experience. This essay delves into the incorporation of AI in our English class highlighting how it has transformed our educational journey by boosting productivity, fostering personalized learning, and promoting critical thinking. Our English class has greatly benefited from the implementation of AI technology. It has enhanced our productivity and improved the quality of our learning experience by providing customized feedback, streamlining content delivery, and encouraging critical thinking abilities. Incorporating AI technology in our English class has revolutionized how we receive feedback on our assignments and assessments. AI-powered tools including automated essay graders and language analysis software offer instant and personalized feedback. By utilizing these features, we can pinpoint areas where we excel and areas that require improvement, leading to more effective and efficient progress. Timely feedback also helps us revise our work more efficiently and effectively enhancing our productivity. Through the power of AI, we have created invaluable thinking partners that assist us in analyzing our readings through various critical lenses and personas. This innovative technology offers us a unique opportunity to engage with our texts in a novel manner, employing familiar voices and translations, thereby revolutionizing our approach to interacting with the material. AI technology encourages critical thinking, problem solving skills by challenging us with complex tasks. Intelligent algorithms can analyze our responses, adapt to learning patterns, and present us with thought provoking questions and scenarios. These skills foster independent thinking and enhance our ability to analyze, evaluate, and synthesize information. By integrating AI into our English class, we have developed a deeper understanding of the subject matter and honed our critical thinking skills. The infusion of AI technology in our English class has had a transformative impact on our learning experience by providing personalized feedback, facilitating efficient content delivery, and promoting critical thinking skills. AI has enhanced our productivity and the quality of our education. As technology continues to evolve, we must prioritize embracing this. 
artificial intelligence, AI, plays a pivotal role in education by enabling individuals to embrace lifelong learning and succeed in a constant evolving world. Nice Thank you. Do you want some but, people? Uh, yeah, some some people came in at, at, in the middle of that. You yes. want to say who that is again? Who wrote yes, this? Uh, my student Ola was. Uh, he presented that to me um, in writing a um, uh, essay for scholarship, and I just told him I, I just needed anything five hundred words, and that's what he gave me. And I was very shocked that that's what he gave me. And you all should know that he's been accepted to University of Michigan in their mechanical engineering program. So now we're fighting for this child to get some money to go there. Um, so that that's interesting, but um, that's that's how how it went. Thank you for reading that. I sent it to Paul, everybody, because I was really in shock that that's what he shared with me. Cool. Any other thoughts? Re responses beyond clicking, you can click. But <laughs> yeah, Christina, anybody have any thoughts about the essay? Any quick responses. No. Nomenclature, so. Yeah, we used it. We used it. And what I had them do before, we couldn't even finish everything because of how much I was infusing into the reading. Um, I had them make up their own thinking partners as an exercise. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So right. they had to do it themselves. And so I, I really like how he talked about the critical thinking skills because yeah, it is higher order learning. You just can't, and what we're learning even in here as adults, it's difficult to create thinking partners to help you analyze, synthesize uh, text. It's, it's not that easy. And they found that out, but they were, you know, and then we started toying around with the term prompt engineer um, yeah. because he's an, he was one of our engineering students. Yeah. So, cool. yeah. I came in kind of late. So it was, was that a scholarship essay? Yes. Mm -hmm. And it could be about anything. The organization asked for anything, right? About okay. anything, just 500 words. So it's, I came in kind of late. It sounded pretty positive overall. Mm -hmm. It was. And then as I read it out loud, I thought it was a very repetitive. So I know he didn't, I don't know. it doesn't sound like he took it through AI to write it. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting, uh, yeah, anyway, yeah. So th thank you. We put you on the spot there. You just sent that to me. I, I finally got to it and mentioned it and you graciously read it as we were all gathering here. I really appreciate it. Um, and so we're just sort of checking in where we are. Anybody, um, I did mention, Bob, that uh, you and I and um, David, who can't make it tonight, and Bonnie um, and Marina, last week, we said we would start with journals. Um, and I'm happy to get to mm -hmm. thinking about journals a little bit. Mm -hmm. But anybody else want to check in with what you're thinking about um, as we get started here? Why don't we all do that briefly? Yeah. Chris, do you want to pick that up? Sure. Um, I'm, we said you were at the desert last week. Did you have fun there? Or did yeah, you... yeah. It was beautiful and, um, you know, not really hot. So that's nice. <laughs> so, you know, that red sand kind of look there. Um, so, you know, this summer I'm teaching teachers who are getting their master's degrees in educational technology. And um, one of the things I want them to do is to think about wicked problems in education. And so I was thinking about thinking partners that could take on the role of stakeholders in these wicked problems. So let's say, for example, and I'll be done here in a second. Let's say, for example, your wicked problem is like the learning gap from the pandemic. Um, there would be a lot of stakeholders in that problem. So I was thinking about um, the, the different kind of people and the perspective they might give to articles about that issue. So like a principal versus a parent of a child who you know, did great during the pandemic versus, you know, the mayor or whatever. Yeah. They are also finding articles about their yeah. problem. And I'm going to try to have them 
um, think about thinking partners that are really related to their setting. So if I teach in a rural school, I would try to think of a principal at a small rural school who has, you know, certain concerns that might be different than a principal in inner city Philadelphia. Cool. Have you done any more than we did a principal one together? Have you done any more? Than I was just playing one? around with the principal one on an uh, article about um, banning cell phones in schools. Hmm. Cool, cool. Uh, Marina, what's up with you tonight? How are you? I'm good. <laughs> um, not much. I just um. Well, tell us so. so one of the things that I, I figured out after talking to some time with Marina is that you're just finishing a project having to do with the Hudson River. Do you want to yes. briefly tell us about that? Oh, okay. Um, so my colleague and I did some work with the Institute for Humane Education um, this year around solutionary thinking. And um, the idea of it is to identify a local problem and take the students through a process. And my colleague and I wanted to introduce them to our local river, the Hudson River, which um, many of them actually, it's like a, a mile away from our school, but like they didn't really have much experience with it. But they had prior experience knowing that um, there was some pollute, there were some pollution issues and um, it's been like a whole class inquiry project. So it's not something that was designed in advance. It kind of evolved with the children and, and what they brought to the table and where their um, curiosity kind of went. And um, yeah, we're, I mean, we're, we have to wrap it up because we're out of school in like five days. Um, so we're kind of just at the part where we are putting together some of the pieces of how would you share the information with the public um, and what might be some the a, a solution that is does the most good with the least harm. Cool. And what I will add to that, my Christina, she had to go get a call, I think, but Jack's going to stay with us, which is great. Um, so one of the things we're um, some some brief context. Marina and I are running in July a four week workshop um, for students who will be the graduate students who will be student teachers in uh, different mm -hmm. schools in the Bronx. Is, is that Lehman College? This is, mm -hmm. and um, but what I learned this week is that fifteen out of nineteen of them are going are um, elementary school teachers. And so Marina, your, your example and your thoughts about all this are really going to be important. And like seven out of those 15 are actually early childhood, um, you know, mm. up to second grade. Mm. So I'm like, I'm quickly researching, uh, do, do, does AI even exist in kindergarten? Um, how does this work? And believe it or not, there's a whole body of, of uh, research around it. <laughs> and uh, thinking about how, how, you know, to get in, introduce and think about anyway. So that's some of some of the thinking we've been doing. And Marina's used used a lot of STEM tools in that project, but mm -hmm. we're we're thinking about how to use your example and and then maybe figure out a way to bring AI into it. Although mm -hmm. at this, I'm just sort of like taking a big breath and wondering like. AI in elementary school feels way different than AI in um, secondary school. Did, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I'm I'm exploring that with the director of technology in my school around what that can look like for younger people. And one thing Paul and I talk, talked about the other day is that, um, you know, there's a certain responsibility that comes along with using this technology and um how do we begin to introduce that and model proper usage to younger learners it's something to kind of like do some deep work around for me and maybe yeah. all teachers all people using it i don't know 
one of one of the first articles I read indicated that one of the things is raise awareness because kids are coming to school already using AI tools and they don't even know they are right. Mm -hmm. So um, so that, that might be interesting to think about too. But um, so cool, cool. Thanks for checking in like that. Um, mm -hmm. Bob, how are you doing? What's uh, going on with you? <laughs> um, what do you want to think about? I'd love to just spend time if folks are interested thinking about how how learners can improve their learning power by using AI to get feedback on their reflections, their written reflections over time. Mm. So the big idea is can AI help us become better learners by giving us feedback on our manifestations of learning or our, 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 our uh, reflective practice and help us become more reflective practitioners through that process. Cool. cool. Uh, I immediately, I immediately want to, want to go back. I mean, the, the essay as, as sort of positive as, that we started with as yeah. it is, um, rings sort of like, I like it doesn't ring untrue to me because I, I kind of like know the details about some of the ab ab abstract things he says, mm -hmm. but but I would love to kind of like go back in and say, yeah. you know, here's an example of that, right? And here's an example of that, and so. Anyway, but I think I think he certainly did. Anyway, he suggests that he he did some learning um, in the few months that we did that with him, but that yeah, that that'd be a good place to start. I would love but, yeah, to. I would love to to read that full piece, Bonnie. I missed it, but I would love to find find time to, or if you can share it to, to yeah, read it. Uh, Paul has it. He'll 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 implant it in here on us for us somewhere. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do that. Yep. And Jack, how are you? What's going on with you? Uh, hey, I'm good. I was I was thinking of doing my best my best uh, Chris impersonation and talking about. Uh, Connected learning and puppets and, <laughs> and student student work and participatory democracy, but uh, but, but I'll I'll bring um, um, one one um, one thing I was thinking about with the elementary school with younger learners. Uh, but my background, one of my backgrounds is in language learning mm -hmm. and uh, including language learning in K twelve schools, including language learning for uh y younger kids and and using technology and things and one of the things mm -hmm. i've been using chat gpt for myself and geeking out on and sort of playing with and trying to push the push the boundaries of is making making custom vocabulary lists for myself so i am huh. i'm learning hungarian and and i'll ask chat gpt you know, i'll be like you know i'm a a1 level hungarian learner um my teacher in Hungary is is deeply involved in a set of anti-government demonstrations, and every week they're getting tear gassed, and it's it's it's, it's a rather tragic, horrible thing. But I want I, so I asked ChatGPT. I'm like, last week there were these demonstrations in Hungary. Could you could you give me give me twenty uh, key vocabulary words for me to understand those demonstrations in Hungary? Um, and it does. It generates twenty key vocabulary words pretty perfectly. And then I say like I I, I could say other things like. Uh, I have a hard time memorizing vocabulary. Could you come up with clever rhymes to help me to help me remember the words, wow. which it does? Uh, I can also okay. say, uh, write a write a poem in the in the style of a of a of a traditional Hungarian poet using A one Hungarian vocabulary about the demonstrations last week, and it does. Uh, and I can I I could just go on and on. It's it's kind of fun. Uh, and then I bring these to my teacher. We discuss them, and and it's a lot of fun. But I one thing I could Wait, imagine. So the, you're actually doing this? I'm doing it every day. Yeah. yeah. And what do you do? Just sort of copy paste them somewhere and yeah them yeah yeah. We, I have a Google Doc for my, my, my me and my Hungarian teacher collaborate on a Google Doc. Uh, uh, I, sometimes I WhatsApp them to her too. But but yeah yeah. It's not. They per, they they they. they you know, they persevere on the on the on the in the Google Doc. They're searchable and everything, but 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 it 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 comes and goes. But it's it's the, the fun thing is pushing. You know, is 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 playing with it. I guess I guess one of the things that working with elementary schools and particularly 
by working with all all levels, primary and secondary, uh, there was always a big concern in in language learning between um, between BICs and CALPs, basic interpersonal communicative skills and cognitive academic language proficiency. Mm -hmm. and, and there was always this idea that 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 non-native english speakers would acquire would acquire uh would acquire BICs, basic interpersonal communicative skills like on the playground and 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 children learn language very quickly but they would have a hard time with the with the cognitive academic skills and and sometimes that's sort of domain specific uh content skills you know sophomore chemistry ap chemistry or something you you know the you need to learn um, sometimes it's also like test taking and things like write an essay test or, or you know, write, write an essay, compare and contrast essay or, 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 or word problems or something. But I was just thinking about at those younger grades, like if you had a Chinese speaker and a Russian speaker and a Spanish speaker in your class, you could, you could make a list and it could be include like, you know, title pools and algae blue slides and, you know, you could just, these things that would be. It would have been possible six months ago. You could you could send third graders with a with a list in their native language of like you know key key Hudson River vocabulary just to just to to sort of bootstrap the process a little bit. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just just um, I you know other people thoughts about that what what you're doing and what that might look like in the classroom. Did I make that? I didn't make that clear. No, yeah, you <laughs> did. Okay, you uh, I'll just wait then. Yeah, yeah, it's like um, it 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 is. You're asking it to do something, but in turn, it can have you think about actionable items based upon the scaffold that AI has created, um, because it seems to have provided a certain number of steps that you can go through in order to get to an end. Um, so I, I was thinking about actionable items and, and it makes the learner think in that way. That's a huge issue in language learning because you're so helpless when you're learning a language. It's my learner agency in Hungarian. You know, I don't have to just sit around and wait to be taught a word. I can, I can you know, I, I have this, this tool at my fingertips. I, I, I did one in French the other day. Uh, I said I, I, I was we were playing with Donald Trump's arrest, which is which is uh, fun to play with. And I said I said uh, you know, Vic, Victor Hugo is uh, is a famous famous is, is famous for his sort of historical epic you know scenes. Could you write write a style write write, write a description in beginner level French as if Victor Hugo was describing the arrest of Donald Trump? And uh, it did a it did a really good job, and it was a lot of fun. Wow! So you're you're like you you know languages and you know translation programs and all that, right? You're this is your expertise. Um, what what's your sense of what you're getting back from mm. ChatGPT? Is is it accurate? Is can we trust the translation or? You know, people are complaining. They're, they're, you know, I've seen a couple of articles that say, you know, minor languages are going to be left behind, uh, and and of course, of course, it speaks in the dominant dialect. I mean, dialects are, are always have history, and there's always power dynamics involved in in dialects and things. But for all that, like Hungarian is not a language where there are a lot of resources for it. So so that it that it does a passable job. Maybe mm -hmm. it's. 65 percent as good at hungarian as it is in english i don't know but but that's that's a thousand times better than what i had in hungarian last time you know nine months ago so um so I, i'm not i'm 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 not right. you know yeah just reflecting back to marina and my uh students that we're going to be facing they are going to be in uh quite a few of them are bilingual teachers also. They're going to be in schools that are pre-K through fifth grade, totally bilingual, where, mm -hmm. where the goal is that all of the kids learn both English and Spanish. And some kids come learning Spanish, some come learning English. So I'm like trying to figure out how what you're just describing there you do for yourself could be of, of help to those teachers as well. You could, you could level, it occurs to me, you know, if you have 
if you have a piece of content and you want sort of an easier version, if you have a Spanish piece of, piece, of, piece of content that the heritage learners know can read easily, but the but the native English speakers can't, you could you could you could have you could have the AI make it easier, uh, or or come up with a vocabulary list to accompany it or something. You could do the same thing with the English. So you could hmm. if you have two people you have two people approaching a, a a piece of content from two different levels. So you could give each of them some um, some aids. What do you think um, the uh, value added is to GPT, like versus like Google Translate? It sounds like this is a richer experience, but I was just wondering, like, what would you say m makes it better? I mean, what 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 Chat GPT, the, the generative part of Chat GPT of generative AI, is the you know. There were demonstrations like last week in Budapest. I'm a beginning Hungarian student. He, you know, give me the 20 word, 20 most relevant words uh, to about those de about those demonstrations, or 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 look at Hungarian papers and write me an article about those demonstrations, but do it at, at A1 level Hungarian. It's really good at that. It's 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 sort sort of like we've used it some previous times in here for the summarizing function of it, and and it's so it's it's. Um, that's that's very different from putting an putting an article in Google Translate or or just making my own vocabulary list in Google Translate. I think. Or I'm trying to think of it from a kid's point of view, right? Uh, I'm not sure, but let's say I have a journal entry, which we want to get to a little bit. But um, and and we could ask it to come up with keywords that are about the same thing I wrote about in my journal, right? So whatever kind of interest you're having can become can shape the kind of thing you're getting back right i think yeah that's that's the big idea for me paul is that mm -hmm. what i what i hear um jack saying is that his personal curiosity is driving mm -hmm. his in, engagement with the world and it, it no and no other way could jack accomplish what he's doing which is to say i'm going to create something either fun or a personal interest and see if I can't use my personal interests to create an experience for myself that will help me. It's just, there's, it's like the ultimate personalization of, mm -hmm. of, um, uh, you're, you're designing your, your, it takes a ton of agency. This feels like an adult activity, but obviously kids are, are going to be able to get better at this, which is to say, what do I want to know? It starts with that question. What do I want to know? And then what's the spin? I want to, I want this from a, from a Kendrick Lamar perspective. And now we're going somewhere. Now I'm leaning in. I care. Like what's, what's, how, what, what does Ken, what would Kendrick say about Trump and his, you know, arraignment? You know, like this is where it gets really engaging for, for kids. And that's what Jack just did. He said, I, this is what I care about. Now I'm going to start, I'm going to start making Making yeah. and learning. Mm -hmm. And think about this, uh, Bob, just uh, thinking about what you just said. You can have two different young people in a classroom and use those, uh, and they each get to choose their own other partner on that one issue. Right. And think about the conversations that could be had yeah. based with a, with a base start yeah. of, of, of mining chat GPT yeah. in this make. So I, I have heard some criticism of, um, or some questions of Khan and, and their, their thinking partners, what do they call them? Um, they're, um, what do they call them? Doesn't matter. Um, which is that so far it's only been tested with kids who are pretty motivated and, um, and have curiosity and so forth. And what's going to happen when you put it in a school where the kids are not, right? And I don't know if we have to care about that too much, but, you know, because we we want to get... It's okay that we create tools that work for innovative situations, right? I, I think. But, yeah. And, it, and, you know, maybe it'll push us to rethink some of those deadly classrooms as well mm -hmm. right that's a big working. one yeah <laughs> the one thing that i think though paul in response to what you just said 
you know, young people are walking around with technology all the time and asking them, you know, you think you would think that they were born with uh, something in their hands. And if we really take notice how young mothers now, they don't give their children a pacifier anymore to be quiet. They're putting cell phones in their hands in the grocery stores to be quiet. So, you know, I think this, we're moving into what young people really want to do instead of being told you can't have your cell phone in, in school. You know, I, I mean, it, that should be over now. This is, we're, we're, they're, so, they're beyond that. And, and we're trying to catch up with them, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Marina, you have third graders. Do you have any thoughts on how children are dealing with this stuff? Or? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it is embedded into a lot of the things that they're using. I mean, we're Microsoft school, so like even like text predictability like as a feature design using the designer on slides so they're maybe that might be i don't know i think they probably think it's like fun i don't know but they're not talking about it like they're not coming in with anything yet and we just had our conversation with our staff they had a staff um, meeting a few um days ago about like the direction that the school wants to go in at least with you know, developing a use policy and stuff like that. So I don't think anyone's been using it with students. Your point of saying the staff, so it, it, it's early in, you're saying you didn't come up with the policy, your staff. They're walking about, they're working on it. Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah okay. A policy about using AI in the school community? Yes. Yeah. Does it look like it's going to be like the Debbie Downer syndrome, syndrome or uh, no? How, are they talking about it? No, no, my my um, no, my administration and um, depart uh, director of technology are um, incredibly supportive of using AI in the classroom. In fact, they're doing quite a bit of speaking about the potential that it has to really, you know, help students as learners and bring, you know, so um, they, they're supportive in using it. So they're just, you know, there's just things like I'm in New York state, we have a data privacy law too. So mm -hmm. there's things around that there's um, some of the exploration around like, you know, academic dishonesty, and how are we going to be using it with students and things like that. That's really cool. Right. Yeah, we're doing good. Good work. So let me, let me, um, uh, uh, yeah. One of the, what, there, there are a few different directions this has gone, but let me just, let me just stay with, at, at the very end of uh, our session last week, I, I sort of put out what I called a challenge. And I, I think it would, would be fun if we could figure out in our ver in networks, if we could figure out how to ask people to do dialogue journals, right, with mm -hmm. AI, right? Whatever platform you're using, um, and, and I suggested that last week, but so that we could share each other's experiences. Um, and I actually stopped doing mine because I visited family this last week, mm -hmm. but um, I'll show you what it looked like a week ago. I'm trying to share screen for a second. So, Paul, are you saying yeah, you, yeah. Gave, you gave us homework? I didn't do that. No, no, I didn't give you homework. I, I, I just mentioned <laughs> it at the end. I'm asking if it would, I'm asking if, if this would be a fun thing to do. Yeah. That's, that's really what I'm saying. And, and by fun, I mean, um, would would we learn something from doing it? Because given if given what Jack just described, for example, I asked him how he gave that to his teacher because um, I want to see it, right? Yeah. So if he were keeping a journal that he could share with us, he could kind of say, "Here's here's the here's the prompt I gave to to you know Chat GPT. Okay. Here's the response I got, and then this is what we did with it." So that 
there were, could be some sort of sharing like that. Does that make okay. some sense? Yes, yes. Um, and, and let me just go a little bit further. Um, and this is on Youth Voices and not finished yet or anything, but hit my thinking about it. Um, uh, I need to go to my portfolio. And then here's my, I think I've left it private at this point. Yeah. Right. So I'm just keeping, so June 2nd, I started keeping a journal, right? And on the, on, and this is just a, I'm just showing it to you physically. I'm not, and, and we could set this up so people could do it on Youth Voices if they wanted to, but I'm, I, it's more like the idea of it that I'd, I'd love to get out there that, that here's my journal entry on the left side. And then I, instead of my prompt, right, I have certain um, templates that I'm using over here. So I used the say back, the pointing, the lurking, and the dear reader letter. And I got these responses from AI. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't do much with them, but I, I, I kind of want to make this easy. So it's, you know, Here's my, here's, here's, so it's a dialogue. The idea is that when I go in June 3rd, I might read what happened, what AI gave me back on June 2nd and move into that. But um, here I use a different kind of AI. Again, don't, the templates issue is interesting if you're in Youth Voices, but if you're not, it's just a way to capture a, it's like the thinking parties, really. It's just a way to capture a prompt, right? What's your what prompt did you give, and what response did you get from it? Is this making some sense? Mm -hmm. um, what for for what we could do further in Youth Voices is we could on each of these days we could suggest a different template. And the kind of the reason for that is that each of these templates um, represents a different framework, mm -hmm. and we could be introducing different frameworks to students that way, different ways. And then we could get feedback from them, like, "Hey, I really love the way you know it did burning questions on my journal entry." Or I, you know, a uh, quick question. Yes, please. When you're using the term framework, what what do you mean? Yeah. So, like. Last week we started talking more, um, and Bob pushed or helped, encouraged us, inspired us to look at um, uh, reading for understanding and some of the frameworks in there, some of the ways they cognitive processes that teachers teach students to learn how to read. Right, um, that's that's one way to think about it. Um, I, I clicked back quickly to the first one here. This framework here, say back, pointing, lurking, and dear reader letter, um, is a, a framework from Peter Elbow's The Writing with Power. So the, their actual, so does that make clear? I, I could keep going. Uh, yeah, so like you guys, it's based on a book called Reading for Meaning or? Uh, Reading for Understanding. Reading for understanding. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So, um, but there are many others. Uh, you know, um, trying so, to think. Yeah, go uh, ahead. Interrupt me, please. As yeah, what, so, just to be forward explicit, here. what yeah. I see what you wrote, and then on the right side, you explain the code there with in the brackets, assessing 12. Yes, I will. Sorry. I, I guess I, I don't know how far. So I could go into this. So just what is it? okay. Yeah. Sorry. I, I mean, I could go look at it. I could, we no, could no, go no, look no. at it. I, mean, yeah, so I, I hear that's, everything. That's, that's a, is that assessing 12? Is that a thinking partner framework? Mm -hmm. So this is on youth voices. It's not a thinking partner. And okay. so I, I'm just sort of jumping into something else that we could put it on now, comment, but it's not there yet. So um, Pat Carini has a whole, you know, descriptive processes. One of the things she does is she does descriptive, I, I, they do descriptive I don't, I don't, I want. I don't want, I'm, I'm not asking. You what okay, okay, sorry, Bob. Well, go ahead. For me, Bob, we used it in my class. So this is what we call, the, and, and Paul has um, 
named it AI Mojo. So when you when you go into the bracketed area, you're asking it to um, you're asking AI to interact with your text in a certain way, not through the perspective of a personality, but through the perspective of um, uh, literary tools. Yeah, the framework, and, right? And, yeah. Frameworks. Yep, yep, yep. So, wicked problems is a you know if you that's that's, that's a, a whole that's all framework, right? Yeah. So, so I I took the details of what a wicked problem is, you know, and research, and yeah. and and that description, put it into a template, so that the student doesn't have to like put those details in when they use the prompt. They just put, hey, I'm going to use research you know three wicked problems, yeah. and it gives them it gives them that response. Does that make yeah. sense? I don't I don't mean to be opaque here, Bob. I, I'm trying to I'm just say trying as to get, quickly as I can. I'm just yeah. trying to so each of these days you wrote a journal and you applied different frameworks using chat GPT to generate text below the framework there in the, in the blue box. Yes. Okay. And that's what the student was talking about in his essay too, because he had written things, but then he was able to put it through Mojo and you know, elevate his writing. And then they, he, he, one thing that I do know that the young person didn't talk about is how much more reading young people have to do <laughs> in yeah. using this. Yeah. There's a lot of reading that's going on. A lot of decisions are being made because they're, they're, they're even looking at, is this thing telling the truth? And if it's not telling the truth, I have to delete it or ask it to do it again. So, Bob, I don't think I've ever shown this to you, so it's worth showing. Mm -hmm. So, we so Chat ChatGPT exists inside of our WordPress site here, right? So here's my journal enter here on the left side um, that I've written. I come over here and I say, "Oh, my teacher told me to," or I remember that. I really like the say back one, right? Wow. So I find the say back one and um, uh, is it there? Yeah, there it is. And, and then I can pull my text over and it does that prompt for me, right? Oh, wow. Okay. Is this, is this what you use, Bonnie, with your students or now common? Yeah, both, both of them. Now common. This is what we started on, Youth Voices. Okay. Um, I and, just I was pushing Paul to do the now comment one because we were reading the book. But yeah, go ahead. So now comment. I just checked. Now comment templates are different than the AI Mojo templates. Mm -hmm. There's a yeah. lot of templates here. Just saying. Yeah. And now and and between the two, there are a lot. Yeah. <laughs> And now comment, I have to be, I uh, have to brag a little. Some of those um, thinking partners were designed by my students. By your students, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. cool. Um, and just, yeah. That's so cool. So, so, so this, so, this, but here's, here's, oh, I, this, hold sorry. on. This scenario is more conducive to the journaling scenario. Where, where, yes. Okay. Now, now I get it. Because now comment is not a journaling environment. Mm -hmm. I, I, well, I don't think so, Paul. No way. Mm -mm. No way. But that's okay. That's okay. It, um, I mean, I'm really excited that we have something we can play with a journal idea. Okay. But <laughs> uh, allow me if I will. <laughs> if you push Paul on this. I know. It'll no. work like no to Paul. So here's, not, here's, not but here's so. the deal. I mean, I'm thinking, I'm, look, very, very real here, right? I'm thinking about these teachers I'm working with this summer. Like, can we really introduce two platforms, Youth Voices and Now Comment? And and they will never use Youth Voices in kindergarten, right? Yeah. Um, so what are we doing? I, so I'm just trying to be real, here, right? So, but maybe they could use some aspect of Now Comment there, right? Um, it could put some video. Anyway, there's because of the guardrails. When you said that, Paul, I'm thinking about the guardrails. So yeah. what would a how? 
you know, right now on, on you voices, everybody can interact with everybody. Yeah. It's, it's designed for secondary. Uh, yeah. Oh. So, but, so, so anyway, so I've been but exploring. Comment, I've been we'll exploring. Have the guardrails, Paul, what? now comment, we have the guardrails where young people would be protected one against the other, older against younger. Uh, yes, I think so. So let me just so here here we go. Um <laughs> I'm I'm creating a dialogue journal here, right? Um I, I just put two in to June first and June third. You can you can absolutely write and upload documents here. Mm -hmm. Um and you can absolutely get AI responses. Um as you can see, I've been exploring um getting some image responses to it as well. Go ahead. Um, and so we we also we also have figured out a way and OpenAI just announced yesterday that they're expanding their context. So really, really soon we're going to be able to get whole documents instead of just paragraphs. Um, given great. the engines, given the engines they put out yesterday, we can't yet, but yeah. we're getting there. But we can't we did some adjustment so that we can get like 20 paragraphs um so a short document you can get the whole document and uh you know so yeah i've been so it would be about creating a collection and you know and then and then uploading your documents there um so i'm not sure why people don't use now comment more often for their own writing but i think that it, it's possible to because we don't teach it like that i don't teach it like i don't teach it like that but i told the students they'll have access to it for the rest of their life as long as you let them on exactly. <laughs> um, but now i'm so, going to throw a bone out there all right <laughs> Because, and, and Cantrell doesn't even, I, I'm going to um, teach <laughs> summer school in the juvenile justice uh, center, which are young people in prison. Yeah, are they allowed to have computers? And so they're allowed to have computers. And mm -hmm. that's one thing that I wanted to talk about. Like, so now, and that's why I was talking about the guardrails. What guardrails are set up now? I know in youth. If you mean by privacy issues, like what's private and what's public? Or, I sorry, mean, what do you what, mean? What, what, um, what guards young people from interacting with people who might not be who they should interact with? All right. So when you it's, it's I was laughing because i didn't even know how to frame that question and i don't even know what question to have for the principal knowing that i want to go in here with one of these doggone tools because these children learn d deserve to learn how to do this stuff too so it's a it's a much more complicated answer but the, it starts with youth voices is designed to go public as fast and it's easier to go public on youth voices now comment is designed almost everything there it's actually hard to make something public we do it all the time but it, you have to know which boxes to click and all that so when you put something up it's private well over 80 percent of the people who use now comment use it in a private way it's private in that your document is only you can see it and me and chris sloan okay. <laughs> and the um and 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 Jeremy, anyway, they, but so only administrators, right? But um, in fact, so, and then you invite, there's a little invite button here. Mm -hmm, yeah, you yeah. invite anybody you want to, to see that document. And I know you can put a time slot on the document. There's all too. sorts of stuff like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. But like this document here, previous to some of the messing around we did, um, I, it wasn't that, um, you you wouldn't have been able to get the whole thing, but now we can get the whole thing and, and respond to the whole document. But so Paul, so there is there is now a button. There is an AI button here on general document comments. This is cool. just as of yesterday, and you can do general document comments. And if if it's too long, it'll just tell you, hey, you know, you you can't use that many tokens right now. 
Sorry, Bob, you were saying something. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I was just wondering from Bonnie's question whether a public document with youth commenting on it would, would be you know, exposed to her students and they might make comments on public documents that might you know, create some concern. So it sounds like there's, a, there's the guardrails question that goes both ways. Um, uh, what if they found a public document and made a comment on yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, that's like possibility. Yeah. something to think about what in terms of introducing this tool to um, this. Yeah, given, that's a good. Point. Anyway, um, yeah, anyway, the so, image. Okay, I'm sorry. you could, uh, yeah, in the end, you would have to keep track of what they're doing, and you can do that easily. I just mm -hmm. want to look because they're in a group and you can see what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and you're the administrator of that group, but yes, you would have to you would have to keep tabs on that. Mm -hmm. And I only have twelve to sixteen students, so the images that you added into now comment initially, everyone. I don't know if everyone knew we would have to go into youth voices, do the images, and then bring them over into now comment. Do you still have to do that with the text or did you upgrade now comment to do images? <laughs> so again, what I've, and this, is just, this is pretty recent uh, experimenting, but what, what, what I'm interested to try to figure out is how many of the conceptual things that we do on Youth Voices, if somebody isn't gonna be able to use Youth Voices, could we actually do back on now comment, right? Mm -hmm. um, so so yes, so, so one of the, the thinking partner that the thinking partners that I'm developing, um, I uh, here I'll try to show one. Um, I am I sharing anymore? I stopped yeah, sharing. You stopped. Okay. Yeah. I mean, keep talking. If I mean, I can I can talk about this as long as you want. But um, I have a quick question. While you're doing yeah, that, yeah, have any please. folks have, have other folks been using Kumo Space effectively in your various contexts? Well, Bonnie's about to. Yeah. <laughs> Explain what you're going to do, Bonnie. Uh, I don't even know what I'm going to do. Uh, um, yeah, we're going to meet about we, it tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yes, we're meeting about it, but the, I want people to use this as a home base, and I really mm. need Paul there to help guide me yeah. as use it as a home base. I have been on Kumo Space before, but it was during the pandemic when, and Kumo Space came out so that we can have our whole advisory group in one setting. And it was over 125 students. And they had a ball because it was like being outside, inside, this room, that room. But that's all, all I had it was for play around. But I like the way Paul really <coughs> uses um, Kumo Space and how all the um, learning centers are set up. Uh, and I want to use it that way for teachers throughout the summer. So I'm um, uh, leading a uh, digital discourse session, digi discourse summer session that is uh, really free uh, about social engagement. And we're using Kumo Space and um, Youth Voices and Parlay. Um, those are the three mediums. But we'll be doing a lot of different things with literature. I'll put a link, Bob, to the thing because it's a part of a larger digital discourse project that we're working on with um, Bonnie's. Ah, I put the. And, and and they, we've set up a beach, right? Mm -hmm. Since the People can meet on the beach and oh man, so cool! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm also it, organizing a um, a, a curriculum design like group of about eight teachers, and trying to use Kumo Space for that. It's like three days virtual kind of thing. We'll see if that works. <laughs> Christina, how how I saw it appear, but now I don't know where it went. Oh, the link. Um, yeah. uh, if you go down to people in the lower left. Yeah, um, people in chat. Yeah, I open that now by name. By and name. there's shared chats. Shared chats, rooms full of toys for youth to use. All shared, full. yep, yep. Click on that, and it'll come up to the right. You get it? Wow. 
That link is the project that. Um, oh, oh yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it was off to the off off the edge of the margin. Okay, so that's the link. Okay, and it's so like, it's like an open online thing we're yeah, doing this summer. I, I, I saw this link last time you were in, and this is super cool. And and so you have a Kumo space that you're using to support this discourse. Not the main discourse, but there so, will be for my two week session. Bonnie's nice. leading a two week set, uh, part of it. Yeah, yeah part of it. So and Kumo space is like is team. an example of social engagement, right? Right. Yeah. And has, has just just because I'm really curious about the potential of Kuma Space to replace and deal with Zoom fatigue, are you guys feeling bullish about it as a adult professional learning interface, or is there friction when people get in here and do the try to do the things that we're doing here, which I think are really cool, but I just don't know how other people interpret the complexities of the opportunities. Well, I only dealt with it with my students because Paul would always meet us right. in class on Kumo Space. And now, you know, dealing with Paul, Paul is the same way for everybody. When he heard the doorbell ring and if he was in Kumo Space, he would go to the young people. They were so doggone spoiled. I don't know. That's why they wrote so much but and did so much. Right. Paul spoiled them. He was always there for that. And that's Uncle Paul. Yeah. It, yeah. And, and he only wanted to be called Paul, too. So, you know, they love yeah. that. But, no, but uh, yeah, I'm sorry. No, no, but but that but that's that's actually one of the things that happens. Um, it, if it, it ends up being a space where people bump into each other and you know, just like in a hallway kind of experience. Right. Um, now, I I think people people are like very comfortable and familiar with Zoom, and and to to introduce a new tool is a little bit um, creates some cultural tension, and like like you like you just did. Where's the where's the um, Where's that uh, thing that Christina right. just put up, right? Yeah. So things, all the buttons aren't in the right same place as in Zoom. So there, there is a little bit of that, would you say, I think? Uh, personally, for I feel adult. like... I, Let me say for adults. For adults. <laughs> for, so, don't have a problem with any of this stuff. <laughs> but personally, I, th I think you can get over that pretty fast. But people were worried about that, you know? So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so just, uh, and I'm, I'm looking at the clock, but I did promise to show you this very, very fast. Um, so I'm creating, I'm creating what I'm calling um, in, in the style of people. So, um, and I, I don't have time to show you the whole prompt right now, and I'm really iterating on it still. But what I want it to do is it, we can't yet um, ask GPT, um, our, our model that we're using, we can't yet get images, mm. but we can ask it and we do ask it i ask it to do three things i ask it to give me the main idea then i ask it to give me an analogy of that idea <laughs> right um a, a and then i say give me give me a give me a description of an image of that analogy right <laughs> and then i take that and i put it in um i could use dolly or whatever um, I use stable diffusion, right? Um, and and we get an image, and then we download it, and we put it up um, here. So this is my Georgie O'Keefe image of this pair of this verse here, right? Does that make sense? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Right. So everything makes sense except that image, given the prompt you gave it. That image doesn't make sense. No. It, doesn't it has nothing to do with George O'Keefe. I'm sorry. Right. So here's the deal. I mean, I, yeah. Is that better? That does. Yeah, it's better. Okay. <laughs> so, but, but that's what I'm iterating around, iterating. I, I, I this is a little secret, <laughs> not a secret, but there's this thing called, called unbundling, um, where you say, do it in the style of George O'Keefe. And then you say, unbundle that. Um, and so it doesn't do it exactly like it doesn't look like a fake Georgie O'Keefe then. It actually um, it actually does a description of what a Georgie O'Keefe looks like using lots of interesting adjectives when you ask it to unbundle, right? So then you end up with a more original looking image, I think. But that's worth playing with. 
Yeah. And this this yeah. is uh, Faith Ringgold's Faith version Ringgold. of of that. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Yeah. So that's what I've been playing with. Thank you. I, I do want to get back to the simple idea. And 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 I don't simple. Think it's, What's simple, Paul? I'm trying to get to that which which is like and and I, I don't want you to think of it as homework, obviously, and especially with the dig dig discourse. But the idea that if we can start sharing with each other the dialogue that we're having, like do a journal, have AI give you feedback on it. And then share that with us. That I think we could all learn from that. That's okay. that's all. I'm just putting that out as an idea at this point. No, that's and, a, and making idea. some tools for how it might work. Yeah. And then we can require students to do it, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. It's, yeah. But yeah. yeah, I love the idea. Do you want us all to go off and kind of interpret the prompt and do our do our little lab, and then come back and share what what happened when we. That would be cool. Be yeah, even if you even if you do three of them, yeah, yeah, yeah right, yeah. Okay. So, see you next week. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. So wait, when we do the journal, or it's just shared with us and nobody else will see it. How how are we doing That's, that? I, see, all of those things are really up to you. Yeah, um, you're going to be. Right. It's really you're going to be sharing it here. So I I would say, be aware that it's going to be public. Okay. I might yeah, even use journaling. previously written journals. Just oh, to shit. Just Bob. <laughs> I have I have all my first. Oh, I'd love to. Journals. I'd love to see the some of them. I might use and, those. And yeah. and if you don't have another way, method to do this, try to do it in now comment. Put it up in now comment. See if it works. See what happens. Yeah. Okay. Um. And just to say, David Cole, uh, you know, he he wrote me a real long thing, like. No, notebooks are his thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> and and taking notebooks and doing something with them. So he's like really jazzed with this idea too. And what's his name? Wolfram. Um, what's the math guy? Uh, Wolfram. Uh, he comes. He comes sometimes. Ooh. No, no, no. Uh, sorry, famous guy. I'll, I'll look it up. They. Uh, he he has a. Uh, anyway, anyway. There, there's a whole notebook out there notebook idea where they're using believe it or not very much like thinking partners so you would come down in your notebook and get a thinking partner to give you a comment so i think this this idea is out there um just is anybody use remarkable the tab the, the, the handwriting yeah that's paper? the guy yeah yeah okay. all right yeah well yeah. what is there a prompt or is just inquiry into ai um for this for this idea, I, it's I think it's I think it's your journal. It's just a journal. I think, and, and and going back to Jack's example at the beginning, it's like start with your. I think the idea is if could we have kids start with their curiosities, mm -hmm. yeah, and then see what AI does to their curiosities. Right? Um, I think that's the goal here. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Cool. Okay. All right. See you guys next week. Thank All you. All right. So long, everyone. Thank you. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bonnie and Paul. See you tomorrow. Okay. Bye. 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 B